This video has been sponsored by PCB GoGo. More on them later. Hey everyone, I'm Zach Armstrong with Lab Coats. This is the VTX Mark I, an honest to god F5 rated Tornado Pro that I 3D printed at home. And today, I'll be showing you how I made it. As some of you may know, I live in central Oklahoma, and as an Oklahoman, there are two things I love the great outdoors and tornado season. Besides that, there are obviously a few other things. But today I'm focusing on severe weather. I have loved tornadoes and severe weather since I was little, and my one personal goal in life is to see a live tornado. I've gotten close before, but no dice, probably because I've never actually left the comfort of my own home to go chase one. But that, my friends, is going to change very soon. Kind of. It it might be a few months, maybe a year, but it'll happen. Mark my words. Anyway, my quest began approximately five months ago when a random commenter mentioned that he had a friend in my area who also had Tesla coil experience. Naturally, I was interested, so he put me in touch with this guy, Jack. I thought I was just going to meet up with some other high voltage nerd, but it ended up being far more interesting than that. You see, Jack is a weather nut too. He, however, actually has some formal education under his belt on the topic, so he knows more about the technical stuff. And he's actually been tornado chasing. Like, a lot. And he's also hell-bent on probing an actual freaking tornado with over 10 simultaneously running data collectors so he can assemble a cross-sectional map of a tornado that may help us better understand their inner workings. Nice. Coincidentally, around the same time we met, which was right before Oklahoma's tornado season, PCB GoGo reached out to me again, hoping to continue our partnership. I think you can all see where this is going. I went over to Jack's place to check out all the tornado probes that he had already built. Design-wise, there were these huge pink cones made from sheet steel, and they were weighed down by a bunch of lead that was epoxied into the top end. Within the conical shell, an Arduino circuit was hooked up that could measure the pressure, temperature, and humidity simultaneously, and log the data onto a microSD card at timed intervals. Final tubes that led to the cone's exterior allowed the circuit to receive airflow and therefore read the atmospheric conditions. Some of his models even came with a GPS system and camera setup. It was all quite impressive, and I give total props to him for building these things on his own. Initially, we focused on improving his conical probes so that we could mass produce them at minimal cost. We phased out the expensive sheet steel in favor of similar thickness steel flashing, and swapped out the lead nose cone for a hardened concrete interior that would improve both weight and debris resistance. The expensive 3D printed base was also changed out for a cheaper particle board one that was coated in water resistant truck bed liner for added grip in the high winds. And finally, I managed to condense Jack's original data logging circuit into a single compact PCB which was graciously produced by this video sponsor, PCB GoGo. For those who don't know, PCB GoGo is a highly specialized PCB manufacturing company that specializes in quick term PCB prototypes and assembly, as well as small to medium volume PCB production. I've been using their services for months now, and I must say, their customer service is next level. These are the PCBs I ordered, and they came out just the way I wanted. They are also produced and shipped out really fast, and I received them after only a few weeks or so. If you ever have PCBs that you need manufactured, be sure to check these guys out at PCBGoGo.com. Check out the links below for more details. And now, with this single PCB data logging circuit, we were finally able to complete the Mark 1 version of our new tornado probes. Overall, the Mark 1 was very similar to the original first generation probes that Jack built, albeit slightly smaller. Sadly though, we stumbled upon one small issue which, in my book, ultimately doomed the Mark 1. It wasn't heavy enough. You see, our goal was to have a probe that could withstand wind speeds of 320 miles per hour or greater. For those who don't know, 320 miles per hour is right around the highest recorded wind speed which was clocked back on May 3rd, 1999 in Moore, Oklahoma. If we can withstand that, chances are our probe will likely survive any tornado that it's put through. Unfortunately, after rerunning the calculations, Jack found that our probe would need to weigh close to 50 pounds for this to be possible, and the concrete was only able to get us to 25. So our only options were to load the probes with additional weights, which would cost a lot, or come up with a new design. While Jack armed a few of the existing probes with metal weights, I began exploring new design possibilities. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the original probes, but they have a few drawbacks. First and foremost, the weight. If we are going to be deploying these probes in series in front of a tornado, we need to do it as fast as possible, and hefting 50 pound steel probes isn't exactly something you do quickly if you value your back muscles. Next, the shape. These things consume a lot of space, and currently we can only fit three or so in the chase vehicle. And since our goal is to deploy at least 5 or 6, this has to be addressed. In the end, this is what I came up with.
This is the Mark II VTX, the culmination of my efforts. Excluding the circuitry, a single Mark I requires around $20 worth of materials to build, while the Mark II can be manufactured for almost half that price. Unlike the first generation and Mark I design, which relied upon friction to remain in position, the Mark II utilizes six 2.5 inch steel spikes to anchor itself to the earth. And most importantly, according to my fluid dynamics calculations in real life tests, this probe should easily be able to withstand 350 mile per hour winds, even when mounted in soft earth. In other words, no tornado on Earth should be able to uproot this device once it's deployed. The Mark II also features a high-intensity 5 watt LED to help with nighttime location and recovery. Assembly-wise, it's all pretty straightforward. The LED is secured to the top half by this star-shaped piece using epoxy, and is positioned just beneath a circular window made of polycarbonate, which is itself secured by a retainer and more epoxy. The circuitry, two 9V batteries, and all the control switches are mounted in the bottom half. For those interested, the main switch is the power switch, and the two buttons are for adjusting the internal clock so that it matches real time. On the bottom half, the spikes, which are simply 8 inch diameter nails, are inserted into these holes and secured with a copious amount of epoxy. The top half fits directly onto the bottom half and is secured with four 2 inch number 8 machine screws, which can be bought as a pack with nuts at places like Home Depot. Now you may notice a slot around the middle of the probe. This is actually to supply airflow to the probe so that it can collect its valuable data. The geometry of this design also helps prevent water from entering the circuit compartment. And that's basically it for now. Unfortunately, with college, I wasn't able to deploy this so far this season, uh, but hopefully whenever things ramp back up in the fall, I will be able to actually go out and chase, and deploy this thing. So be sure to tune in for the part 2 video around then, and if not then, then definitely next spring. And if you're curious about messing with my designs, I loaded everything that you'll need into a zip file which can be downloaded in the video description. This includes the schematics, PCB Gerber files, and Arduino program, and even the 3D files for those who wish to print their own probes. A quick safety note though, I do not recommend that any of you go storm chasing unless you know exactly what you're doing. Seriously, tornadoes are no joke, and even experts get caught off guard sometimes. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you like this video, and click the bell to know whenever I'm uploading. Trust me, I've got a few crazy videos coming up that you do not want to miss. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Lab Coats, out.